don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never Let's do it again, huh?
This morning it's an honor and a privilege this morning as we have Minister Wilson to come in and minister to us on this morning. I would just ask that the church would stretch your hands forth as she comes to minister unto us on this morning. Hallelujah. so much for this opportunity to bring forth the word today. Amen. I just kind of honored to be asked to share a word. Amen. Amen. Last week, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. My topic today is after the resurrection. What are you going to do? Every year we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We commemorate as Christians. Our focus is remembering Jesus' life, his death, burial, and resurrection. And it gives us an opportunity to look at our own lives to do an examination. Like, where, where am I? You know, we have a whole year, and in that whole year, we're dealing with a lot of things, right? I mean, you're, oh, you live on a flowery bed of ease, so you haven't had to deal with anything 364 days of the year. There are a lot of things that go on in a year. For those of you who, like me, you keep track of things, you, you journal or you keep a good, just a good old-fashioned calendar, how about that? Between doctor's appointments, kids' doctor's appointments, school activities, church activities, right? Birthdays, deaths, weddings, all kind of things occurring, right? And so by the time we get around to Advent week, we're looking at the time that Jesus makes his, you know, start preparation and then also make his, his uh, trek into, the, into Jerusalem to be crucified. 
there are a lot of things that have occurred in our lives. My mama died December 3rd. How many of you lost somebody last year? Brother Lesson, you need to put up your fingers and your toes. <laughs> and Sister Lesson, they have lost a lot of people in their family. How many lost a job? Found a job? Look at that. Praise God. How many lost weight? <laughs> well, just depends on the day. But there are a lot of things that are occurring within that time. And so we had an opportunity to look at the life of Jesus Christ and to look at the things that he went through to redeem us. The word says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Remission means simply putting away or sending away. How I many of you, well, now they pay, pay bills online, but those of us who still kind of use a checkbook and you have your, 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 your bill, it says remit, send it away, right? So without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. Thank God for Jesus. We look at how much he suffered, thank God for Jesus. He was beaten, and Bishop described how horribly he was beaten and how his skin was just torn off his, a flesh torn off his body, not just skin, but the meat underneath that, all the way down to the white meat. You know what I'm saying? By his stripes, we are healed. He was pierced in his side and this word said blood and water came streaming down. Thank you, Jesus. He suffered. But one of the greatest things that he suffered was for his father to turn, his, turn away from him because of my sin and your sin. But father knew that it was only for a moment that it would occur. Jesus. On the cross, yet saving somebody. Isn't he awesome? Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. The thief on the cross. Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. Dying, yet saving. Nobody like him. It's interesting how Jesus was here 33 years, some 33 and a half years, but the thing is that his disciples walked with him during that time. And God had him, God already knew who his disciples would be. He already knew that would be a Judas. God wasn't even scared. Already knew. How many of us, we find out a thief, what we're going to do? Call the police. You are arrested, boo. You out of here. But Jesus knew that Judas was stealing from him the whole time. Acting like he cared about the people. But he cared about that money. Look at Jesus. Death, burial, and thank God for the resurrection. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Without the resurrection, look at Jesus. Raised. Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working together for this plan that God had from the beginning, the word said Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. Look at God. He ain't scared. Got a plan. He knew Adam would fall. He didn't make him fall. But he knew he would. Now before y'all get all high and mighty, want to talk about Adam, what about you? 
how many times God has told us to do something and we neglected to do it or we did part of it. So don't be hard on Adam and Eve. By one man's sin, right, death came. But by another one, Jesus Christ the righteous, we have a chance, right? The thing that was restored through this death, burial, and resurrection, the thing that was restored with the blood Taking, taking, uh, taking, uh, taking care of the penalty of sin is sonship was restored. A connection restored. Thank God for Jesus. I looked into the word. It was kind of interesting how in John chapter 20, Jesus had met with his disciples he met with his disciples three times and each time he helped them to understand that it was him that he was yet alive I mean he was res he was crucified they ran off he was resurrected the lady had to go and tell him Jesus has risen then they tried to get especially Peter tried to get an attitude you know Peter Peter kind of like a lot of us don't y'all be hard on Peter. Some of y'all got fast mouths. You always want to be the first to say something. Don't y'all be hard on Peter. But Jesus told Peter he was going to deny him three times. Surely not me, Lord. When that cock crowed the third time and cussing Peter. How many was a cussing Peter? I was a cussing Peter. Thank God for Jesus. I can tell, listen, I can tell on me because I don't own anything and the devil don't get in the glory. Amen. Cussing Peter. I don't know him. Start cussing. But I love, I love Jesus. In John tw chapter 20, it says, verse 19 through 23 says, Jesus appeared to his disciples all except Thomas was there. He breathed on them saying, receive the Holy Spirit. This is when the new birth occurred. Jesus appeared to them. Everybody say, uh, uh, I want you to say Thomas wasn't there. Now why Thomas wasn't there? I'd be like, hey, boy, what's wrong with you? You missed it. Where you been? <laughs> then in verse 24 through 25, here goes Thomas. Everybody say doubting Thomas. Now see, this is the this is the stigma for him. This is the thing for Peter. I mean, for Judas is uh, not Judas. I'm sorry, Thomas is that people still calling you doubting Thomas, even though you finally kind of got your act together. We still call you doubting Thomas. Unless I see here it goes when Jesus appeared again this time. Thomas was there, also known as doubting Thomas to me. That's me. St I stuck that in there. Unless I see the nails. May, uh, print in his hands and put my fingers where my finger where the nails were and put my hand inside in his side I won't believe say what first of all you, you can put your finger in the hole then he said right in the hole in his nail print hand right he won't put his finger right there you're not convinced with one finger? He said, unless I put my finger in his side. I mean, you got to go to the side before you believe. Watch this. This is his confession. I won't believe. Are y'all scared for him yet? <laughs> and Jesus told him, blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. That's what faith is, right? If you see it, it's not faith. Unless I see. See, he look, uh, uh, when it comes to faith, faith has nothing to do with your senses. Seeing, tasting, smell, none of that. Feelings. I feel like, what they got to do with faith? Amen. 
Hmm. A week later, his disciples were in the house, and Thomas was there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Though the doors were locked. Yeah. Now, see, all of y'all like that supernatural stuff on TV. <laughs> this is going to help y'all. Y'all thought that was new. <laughs> Jesus came and stood. Jesus came and stood in the house, and the door was locked. Jesus walked through walls, ate fish. How about that? Supernatural, which is natural for him. And you still don't want to serve him? You still want to be a doubting Thomas? Look at Jesus. It's time now to get this boy lined out. And Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, let me get this lined out. Because aren't you glad that Thomas was not in the wilderness when the children of Israel went in and they found those grapes? Right? He better be glad because that doubt is what kept Israel in the wilderness another 40 years. You better be glad. Everybody say, you better be glad. So Jesus says to Thomas, put your finger. See, Jesus ain't scared of you. Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting. Believe. What does that have to do with us today? Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Now see, this shows me, I, I'm, I'm going to give uh, Peter a little bit more credit than old doubting Thomas. Because Thomas had to actually see touch, feel. He had to see Jesus physically to believe. Jesus had to, well, Jesus didn't send his hand and he didn't send his side. He physically had to be there for him to touch and feel and see and believe. That is not faith. My Lord and my God. Oh, he's just exclaiming. Oh, my Lord, my God. And Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have believed. You're blessed. Because you simply took it by faith. You didn't have to be sighted to see Helen Keller said those there are people with sight yet they are blind. Yes. Verse 30 says Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, watch this, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in his name. There's a reason why the Lord wanted me to go this direction. Because we were given a commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Proclaim. Some of y'all think that's just preachers. Excuse me. Yeah. It's more y'all than it is preachers. Yeah. What you deem as preachers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
Go into every man, every man's world, when I put it that way. Your job, the beauty shop, barbershop. You know, they really need saving in some of those. Barbershop, beauty shop, right? Car shop, repair shop, hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, your house. My house, our house, go. Everybody say go. Go might be next door. But you think in a lifetime you only have to go once? On the airplane, in the airport, in the bathroom, in the park, shopping. Wherever you go, there's an opportunity somewhere to say something about the Lord. People may not want to hear it, so what? I sat by people, they tell me their whole story. I didn't want to hear it. I am not interested in all that, but they told me anyway. But listen, we can't keep being warm and fuzzy on Sunday. It's good to have y'all back. Right? It's good to see y'all. But, the, but the, the commission has not changed. So we have all these devices. Go. We like putting stuff on Facebook. I do. But there are people who will let you into a little bit that they are going through. Why not call them? Why not say, hey, let, let's, let me call you. I want to pray with you. I want to talk to you. There are people on the verge of suicide and you see it and ignore it. How? How? Because we're selfish. Some of us, not everybody. But I have my selfish time alone, honey. I don't feel like it today. I've been dealing with folk and, and I don't feel like it. Holy Spirit said, what I tell you? I remember when we were on TV in, uh, in Phoenix and we were on TVN and they, uh, a lady called the station and said she was going to kill herself. So they called the great man of faith and power, Sam Wilson. Praise God. And he told the lady, lady, go ahead. <laughs> he told the lady, go ahead. Then he got a hold of himself and he ministered to the lady. But if somebody call you at 2 o'clock in the morning, they talk about killing himself, maybe you say the same thing. I don't know. <laughs> but Father wants to use us. And let me show you what's going to happen here. Let's go to Acts. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I got to get there. I know y'all waiting. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. The purpose for the gospel, I just read. That we would proclaim it and share it with others that they will believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, that Jesus is their hope. Acts 1, 8. In the former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Now I want you to pin right there the, the kingdom of God. Verse 4. 
And on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father. The gift, the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Sam, how much time I got? For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Verse 6. Then they gathered around him and asked him. They're still asking questions because Jesus is on his way out. Yeah. If he was on his way out, what would you ask? <laughs> Lord, are you at this time going to restore, watch this, the kingdom of Israel? They were asking about a physical, earthly kingdom. And Jesus was talking about a spiritual, heavenly kingdom in the earth. Both talking about kingdom. What is kingdom? Kingdom is a place where a king rules. And God is the king. He rules, right? And he has, he has us in his kingdom to carry out his rule as little kings. The devil hates that. Because not only that, the king has authority. And Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Then he said, go, I give you authority. Not only did he give us authority, he gave us power. He's given us that power by the Holy Spirit. And he's given the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has authority too. It was necessary for Jesus to leave. Oh, Jesus, don't leave us. Stay with us. No, my time is up. I'm going to send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the one who walk alongside of you to help you, to empower you, to enable you to do what you got to do. To carry out the commission. Go into all the world and preach, proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Not beat up on people. Not telling people they're going to hell. How's that good news? But if you tell them God loves them. And he gave his best for them. If you tell them their sins are forgiven. And that's what Jesus told the disciples. Whoever sins you remit. They are remitted. Whoever sins are forgiven. You forgive them. They are forgiven. What kind of authority and power he's given us. And we've been walking around here like we're weaklings. Like we're nobody. Like, oh God, I don't know what to do. Shaking in our boots. Why? Because we don't know we're full of the Holy Ghost. And power. Walking around like a bunch of weaklings. Listen here. This ain't like. This ain't like Buddhism. I ain't called the kind of ism. This is the kingdom of God alive in us. The kingdom of God manifested in the earth. The kingdom of God with authority. From on high. From the very creator of the earth. The very creator of mankind. We are the people of God. We've been given authority by Jesus Christ. We've been given power by the Holy Spirit. So here these people are scared that leader has left. But he said, go and wait until you are endued with power. Yeah. 
Some of y'all scared to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I was in the Baptist church. He was talked about as an it. And we were rocked the house. Something got a hold of me. We were rocking. I was a good shouter. Run and shout. Throw my glasses. One time I threw my glasses and the screw was still in the handle was somewhere else. That's a miracle. <laughs> shout all over the place. But I noticed once I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I had to do all that shouting because then I started to learn a little something. Well, I still shout, but I didn't have to do like I used to do. Don't be afraid of being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Don't be afraid. Why would God give you something you'd be scared of? This is the last thing Jesus told. The last. The very last thing he said. Wait. Till you endure with power. Why? Why do you need power? I mean, Jesus, we walk with you. You taught us. We sat at your feet. We learn all this stuff and know the Beatitudes. We know a little bit here and there. And then he says... Hmm. They wanted to know about the kingdom. And he corrected them. For it's not for you to know the times, the dates, the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, in the earth, in Houston, in Texas, the United States. Next door. You know, I found out if you really been filled with the Holy Spirit and if you know what you have and you start communicating with Holy Spirit as the person he is and not a it, your life will change. When you open up the scriptures, it's like the scriptures would jump off the page. Yes. That's what happened to me. Yes. And then I need to get more teaching. And by the spirit of God, I was led here and led there and led here and led there. Still in the same church. There's a need for every church. But I had started to grow. I needed to leave. God moved us on. But when I got to Phoenix, we moved to Phoenix, and then I found out what this, all this it stuff was about. Some stuff I learned here, but to under, get into the word and to really to see what this spirit-filled life, spirit-led life is about, it started to change me. It's as if every cell in your body changes in seven years. Every cell in me by the Spirit of God changed. I am not the person I used to be. Listen, don't you allow the devil to make you shame. Some of y'all so you you got you got some good testimonies, but you're scared to tell them. Why? Because you still own them. Because they you thinking about how it's gonna make you look to the saints. But if the real saints started telling y'all stuff, y'all better stop with these fake testimonies. You got a church testimony and the other testimony. The other testimony is what's going to deliver people. All that fakeness. Mm. That's why when Sam and I in marriage ministry, we tell it. Lump it, like it, don't like it. We don't care because it doesn't belong to us. We want people free. As long as there's darkness, the devil has a chance. But when you shine the light on it, just like roaches in the kitchen, the devil has to scatter. Holy Spirit wants to help us 
but he can't help you in your unbelief. I'm, I'm going to share a scripture with you. You know when, when disciples couldn't cast the demon out? And then people been saying, this kind of demon come out by prayer and fast. They weren't talking about a demon. Jesus said, y'all couldn't cast them out because of unbelief. How do you get rid of unbelief? Prayer and fasting. Stick with the subject matter. Prayer and fasting. That's how you cast out unbelief in your own life. Prayer and fast. Ain't no demon. You think I ain't seen nowhere where Jesus said I had to fast to get this demon out. <laughs> it say he fasted. The man was at was at the tombs. He had a whole bunch of demons. This just like a baby demon. Jesus said, "Come out." Why y'all couldn't cast him out? He said, "Because you were in unbelief. You forgot about the fishes and the loaves. When I fed the five thousand, and again I fed another five thousand. Come on, saints. Listen, we have authority over every demon. Some people try to make sound like them demons so bad and they're going to have you. Y'all better stop reading that crazy book, Pierced in the Parlor, because that's a lie. <laughs> Don't read that crazy book. It have you seeing demons in the toaster. I'm telling you. There is no greater power than the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit whose temple you are. Wake up, church. Wake up, church. I remember our little baby, Tanisha. She was, uh, Sam and I were going through, we moved to Phoenix and Oh my God, it was tough. And Sam had his head down. She walked up. She said, Daddy. Held his head and a face in her hand. She said, Don't worry about it. Jesus got this. Jesus is going to take care of it. She was about four or five years old. Three. She was three years old. Then another time, <clears throat> she was trying to learn how to ride a bicycle. And, um, I was out there in that dirt. Y'all know dirt. It's hot. Trying to teach her how to ride. No grass in our backyard. And her little friends, they were, both of the boys, they were riding until she was running behind them. And she had a bike, but she couldn't ride it. I, I tried. I'm out there trying to, come on, baby. Whew, I got tired. Oh, Lord. She said, Mama, just wait a minute. Put that bike down. Didn't have training wheels on Went back in the house. She said, I'm going to pray. She went to the house and prayed. She came back, got on that bike, start rolling. Out of the mouth of babes, God has ordained praise. He wants to use our children. I'm saying they little when they get here. No, children can lay hands on the sick. They can cast out demons. They are, they are not unbelieving believers like some of us. So, my charge to you today is if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, all you got to do is ask. Jesus said, all you got to do is ask. And you will receive the Holy Spirit in his fullness. Out of your belly shall flow, flow uh, living water, rivers of living water. And I'm telling you, another case, when my, uh, Sam and I got filled with the Holy Spirit, we used to sneak off of Papa Osteen's church and speak in tongues. <laughs> he said, now, when I first started, got, I got feel right after I got out, I was in the store. All of a sudden, it just hit me real hard, and I didn't know what was wrong. And I got home, as soon as I walked in the door, threw my stuff on the floor, I started speaking in tongues. So the devil said, that devil going to tell me I didn't have anything. All of a sudden, it went down to ta, 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 ta. Oh, Lord Jesus. We went to Pop Osteen's church, my sister and I. And uh, Pop Osteen said, let's stand up and practice our tongues. Now, see, some of y'all have a problem right there. But that ain't your church. <laughs> stand up and let's practice your tongues. And so I'm still in the Baptist church. So my sister, too. So anyway, we said, 
So Pablo C. said, now when you speak in tongues, some people are going to be fluent, but you might be ta 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 you still speaking in tongues. It just hasn't kicked in all the way. Oh, Lord, I'm ta 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 This man next to me, he was getting it. All of a sudden, my ta fluent kicked in. Boy, I was fluent, and I was just gone. I said, ooh, praise God. But see, speaking in tongues ain't just for you to do that. The Bible said, <clears throat> you can pray in the spirit. There are times, honey, you don't know what to pray as you are. Bishop, you've been praying in tongues since you've been here. Yeah, I bet you have. He saw some of you. <laughs> Building up on yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. God loves us. He's equipped us. He's given us everything, everything that pertains to life and godliness. You finding it hard to live holy? I know my time is up. You find it hard time to live holy? Listen, pray in the Spirit. Visit with the Holy Spirit. If you, ain't, if you know, I haven't had the fullness yet, just start talking to the Holy Spirit. And he will help you. How many of you want to walk in the power? Stand to your feet. How many of you want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit? Thank you, Jesus. How many of you want to walk in the power? Listen, when, when my brother was murdered, 